This is a presentation on a uh, new offering that uh, we're looking at offering in Red Hat Enterprise Linux called KPatch. And what KPatch allows for is live patching of the Linux kernel. So KPatch is a set of open source tools that allows for the generation of patch modules. These are kernel modules that contain patched code for the kernel. Um, the tool allows you to build this module from a source level patch and then apply those patch modules to the running kernel, uh, closing vulnerabilities and uh, bugs without the need to reboot or start any restart any processes. A disclaimer, this uh, service is not offered by Red Hat yet, and the information and demonstration in this presentation may differ from the final offering. Um, the use cases that we are targeting with this technology are largely CVEs. These are, um, you know, Remote, uh, remote exploits, uh, privilege escalation exploits, and denial of service exploits. Um, secondary uh, uh, ways to use this technology are for stability fixes and driver issues, and then also for kernel development, which, it, which largely applies only to kernel development, um, where you can uh, replace this technology basically replaces functions in the kernel. And so if you uh, are developing in a part of the kernel where functions can be easily replaced, then you can uh, modify the kernel while it's running uh, without having to reboot every time you make a change. Um, the situations we're targeting here are big non-virtualized workloads um, where you have you know, one huge data database on a big machine and it's very difficult to take that machine down. It's very difficult to reboot um, because there are processes in place and you have to schedule maintenance windows. And um, basically the, the situation is, is that you can install the new kernel, but until you reboot, the server remains vulnerable. Another situation that we're targeting is um, the hypervisor or container host situation where, um, especially if you are in a, if you're a cloud provider or something like that, um, and you have non-migratable tenant guests that you don't have control over, then you're really stuck. Um, and we saw this with the, uh, the, the, quote, bug that took down the Amazon cloud with the Zen vulnerability, that um, unless there's some way that you can get the guests off that machine uh, so, in, so that you can reboot, you're really, you're really hosed. So... Um, this allow this technology buys you time um, so that you can uh, do whatever needs to be done and that the system isn't vulnerable in the meantime. So a quick overview on how this works. When the Linux kernel is compiled um, and is compiled with a feature called ftrace, <clears throat> it turns on a compiler flag that inserts a no-op at the beginning of every function. And this uh, no op typically has no overhead, but when the kernel boots, ftrace finds the no ops at the beginning of every function in the kernel and marks them and keeps track of them. Um, and the way ftrace works is if you want to register an ftrace handler for a particular function, it changes that no op to a jump. And we use this same technique to do live patching. So when we apply a live patch, it changes the no op in the original function to a call. And that call calls into ftrace. And ftrace then in turn uh, calls the registered handler for that function. In, that, in this case, it's going to be kpatch. <clears throat> Excuse me. kpatch then uh, modifies the return address um, of the... Uh, of the ftrace handler. So rather normally ftrace would return to the original function after the tracing function is called, but instead we modify the return register to return to the replacement function, which exists in the kpatch module. Then the replacement function executes instead of the original one, and the replacement function returns to the caller of the original function. This effectively bypasses the original function and it does it in a non-destructive way so that rollback can be done. So on the components, um, th there's a command in the upstream project called kpatch build. This is the command that will create your patch module from a source level patch. Um, in our offering, this will be done by Red Hat. This involves a large 
amount of human analysis and uh, testing because the patches that are in the upstream kernel to fix CVEs are not designed to be applied at runtime. And so there are certain pitfalls that need to be uh, checked for when generating a live patch. Um, and this requires a decent amount of kernel expertise. And um, we're going to generate or we're going to create a guide on the pitfalls there. But the thing is, the, this is all done on the Red Hat side. So customers don't have to worry about this. On the user side, it's very simple. There's the kpatch command and then kpatch hotfix modules. And those are delivered in two packages. One's called kpatch and one's called kpatch patch. So kpatch, uh, the kpatch RPM contains the tool for um, applying and managing hot patches on the system. And the kpatch patch RPM contains the actual hotfix modules for the support supported kernels. This is a, basically a man page of the kpatch command. You can see what the options are here. You've got load, unload, replace. Um, you can get info on hot patches and kpatch list. We'll show you the hotfix modules that are installed and which ones are loaded currently in the running kernel. So I'm going to do a quick demo on um, how, this, how this works in practice. So what I have here is a, a RHEL 7.1 beta machine. And it's running the uh, 210 version of the kernel. This version of the kernel was uh, vulnerable to a particular CVE. And I have the program that exploits that CVE called test case here on the system. So um, it's a denial of service exploit. And so when I run this, it will either hang or crash the machines. So I'm going to sync my file system to reduce the risk of corruption here and then run the test case. Oh, and you can see that it crashed the machine and it's rebooting here. Um, so in the event that a CVE like this is uh, exposed, Red Hat will create a kpatch module and then deliver it through the kpatch mechanism. So from a customer side, what you would do is do yum install kpatch patch. And what that will do is install the kpatch patch and uh, package and the kpatch package for uh, the command line utility that's going to manage these hotfixes. There's a delay when installing the kpatch patch package because as part of a post install hook, it's going to install the hotpatch modules into your init RAM FS. That way the patch is applied as early in the boot process as it possibly can. It can't become part of the kernel image, not without a reboot, but um, if you do reboot into the same version of the kernel that's vulnerable, these hot fixes will be applied as soon as possible. So now if we um, do a kpatch list, you can see that we have uh, a kpatch module installed for this kernel version and it's currently loaded into the kernel. And if you look at your kernel log, you can see that a kpatch has been loaded. So now if we um, run the exploit, you can see that it now it doesn't crash the machine and it doesn't hang the machine. It seg faults like it should, um, which is great. We didn't reboot and we've closed the CVE uh, fix and we've closed the, the CVE exploit. So now what we can do in, in the normal workflow, what you would do is um, then install the version of the kernel that isn't vulnerable. I have it and I have the... Um, RPM locally here. We'll just install that kernel version. Almost there. All right. And then we can, so then the workflow, the system is no longer vulnerable. You've got the K patch applied. Ideally, what you'd eventually like to do is reboot into a kernel that doesn't have the exploit. And so you can install the kernel at any point, um, and then during your next maintenance window, or the next time you can schedule any downtime, you can reboot. And the 
this will boot into the new version of the kernel, which isn't vulnerable. And then if we run the exploit here, we, it, we get the segmentation fault like we should. And if you do a kpatch list, you can see that the module for the old version of the kernel that we were running is still installed, but there are no patch modules loaded for, th for this kernel version that we're running. Um, and then if a CVE comes out uh, for the version of the kernel that we're on, then that will be included in the kpatch patch module. The version number on that package will rev, and when you do a yum update, it'll pull down the new hotfixes for kernel for any kernel version that you're running. So this is an overview of that uh, customer workflow that I just got done talking about. Basically, at the customer side, you'll, you install uh, the kpatch patch package, um, and that protects your system against any known CVEs that we have hotfixes for. Then when a CVE is reported and the fix is found, we adapt the, the fix to be a kpatch module that is a fix that can be applied at runtime and then we add that hotfix module to the kpatch patch rpm and then bump the package version then from the customer side you do a yum update of the kpatch patch package that pulls down the new kpatch modules and applies them to the system as part of a post install hook for that package the system's now protected you install the new version of the kernel that contains the fix, and then you reboot, reboot during your next maintenance window. The current state of the project is under uh, active development. Uh, it's completely open. We actually uh, The kpatch user space tools are actually managed in a GitHub repository. We track issues and pull requests through GitHub. Um, we're working in the upstream kernel to get the um, the, the code that up, that actually applies the hotfix um, into the upstream kernel and to have a common API with other approaches out there. Um, we are incrementally getting the feature set accepted upstream and uh, the first driver with basic functionality hopefully will be in the 320, uh, the 320 release of the Linux kernel. This is some information about the project. Uh, the two primary developers, mailing list, the GitHub repository. Um, hopefully this demonstration was useful to you and we hope to get this technology out as soon as possible.